Oh, there we go. That's, I'm back and I'm better. It's smooth. How can you be better? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, you're so kind, Mario. <laughs> Wait, we're already recording? Wait, are we live? <laughs> we're not live. We're not. Is this thing hot right now? Is this so hot? Is this hot. Really hot? Oh, whenever you're on, it's hot. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh my God! This is this is how this is gonna be. Okay, <laughs> this is where we're starting it. So we're gonna do it right now. And today's call is gonna be called "That Dadpreneur Life." I'm here with Mo. Ismael. Is that the right? Is that the way you say it? Am I saying that, it right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, other than that, you'd have to go full Arabic accent and we're not even going to do that. Oh, right do it. Come do it on. Come on, please. It would be Ismail. Ismail. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. I'm going to break that out every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> David Ko. Uh, Dave, you are in Vancouver? I'm in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Right on. And Mo, you're down where? Down south. About an hour and a half outside of New Orleans in the United States in a city called Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Man, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty Hickville, man. I mean, it just, it just sounds like it. I'm not saying that you're, you know, you're a hick or anything, but... You said it, not me. It just, sound, it just, it just sounds like you're back down in that Hattiesburg. I'm in that Hattiesburg. <laughs> in that Hattiesburg, player. So how do they say Volvo down there? Volvo. 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 <laughs> You gotta get that. You gotta get that drawl in there. Yeah. Uh, I am Mario. I am in Hawaii. Um, it's raining today, which is nice. Welcome. That was hot. Um, so I just want to do some intros. Uh, you guys can. You guys can chime in. Why don't you guys start? I can. I can wrap up. Um, Mo, why don't we have you start? Just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, can I can I do my social intro? I'm gonna Let's do my do social intro. It's probably yeah, gonna dude. break y'all's ears. Mm -hmm. Hey, hello. I go by the name Mo Isma. Uh, that's my that's my uh, social handle. Mo Isma. No no L. But um, yeah, I'm a entrepreneur, academic, uh, also a new father of a six month year old boy. His name is Aldine. Oh, nice. I'm not gonna give you the government name, so you, no one like searches him up on Google or anything. <laughs> uh, my business is a video production and video marketing agency that helps lifestyle brands uh, attract the audiences that they want to be able to, you know, convert sales, promote their brand, all of that good stuff that creative does. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and the interesting part and why I'm super excited about this conversation is that my business is about to be two years old. And my son is six month year old. So I have two babies, you know? <laughs> Uh, yeah. and that's, that's, uh, that's what I'm bringing to the table, you know? Uh, my name is David Coe and I am in Vancouver, be beautiful British Columbia, Vancouver. Um, I'm 40, what am I? I'm 48, <laughs> <laughs> closing in on 50. No, you're not. Are you really? I am. I am. What? I did not know that. Um, I've been doing, uh, stuff in the motion design or motion graphic design, um, industry for the last 24 years, just shy of 25. Uh, and running my business, I guess, since uh, 2002, which is uh, essentially a micro studio that is um, structured in a fluid way where uh, I bring on uh, contractors, freelancers, uh, depending on the project, the size of the project, the nature of the project, the style of the project, we'll bring in the right people for that. Um, and yeah, I, the last two years, maybe we'll get into this a little later, but the last two, two years, um, my wife and I both took some time off uh, when our twins came. We have uh, twin girls who are two now, and uh, we have a son who's four. And uh, so we just took some time off to be with the kids and uh, just be with them sort of the, I don't know, crucial years of their lives and in, in forming their personalities and, and uh, giving them a sense of like, safety and this is a safe place and they can be you know who they are meant to be and all that stuff so um yeah that's kind of what i do my name is mario quesada um i i won't say the mexican version of that um but, no 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 you gotta say the mexican you gotta say the mexican version you it's say the mexican uh version. it's pronounced quesada so oh, um yeah quesada quesada 
like uh, uh, it's kind of like kind of like cheese. So quesadilla, you know, you know quesadilla, whatever. Um, that's how you pronounce it. Um, I am in Hawaii, Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm on the island of Oahu. Uh, I've been here for about 10 years. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur kind of off and on since, I guess, since I was 19 when I started doing design and designing for people and freelancing and whatnot. Um, most recently, though, uh, I have stepped back into full-time uh, entrepreneurialism and uh, restarted my, my design studio. I do branding. Uh, I am venturing into brand strategy. I'm going from kind of identity design and branding to full-on strategy. Um, and I have two little, two little ones, a three-year-old little girl who manipulates my heart like nobody's business, and a one-year-old who is the happiest little guy until he's hungry, and then he's the angriest little guy. So, um, yeah, it's a very so it's, accurate statement. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I thought your kids were older, Mario. No, Me too. They're, they're young. Oh, they're babies. Man. Yeah, I started. So late. I'm like I'm the veteran of the group. Yeah, man. As we're far as dads go, that's we're looking, crazy. We're looking to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to I'm here to learn more than anything, really. Oh, gosh. I thought you had like a six year old and like a three or four year old. Oh no, no, no. Okay. I I I mean I probably should. I'm I'm old enough. I'm I'm just you know. I'm just a couple of years behind you, Dave. I'm going to be 45 this year, which is kind of mind blowing to me. Still mentally still want to be 25, yeah. but the bones and the, the aches reminded me that I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. not 25. So yeah. But yeah. The mind says, yes, the body's like, Wait, <laughs> hold up, hold, hold up. on. We used to be able to do this, but relax. Yeah. Why don't you, why don't you have a sit and talk and think about that for a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the purpose of this call is just to just to kind of uh, talk about being entrepreneurs and dads and um, Mo and I are kind of kind of newer and Mo is like brand new six months I remember that I remember that from my, my first daughter just or my daughter just uh, in that just kind of you're just sleep deprived like nobody's business and trying to figure out which ways in which ends up and what day it is and um, I'm, I, I would love to tell you that it gets better when the second one comes around, but I'm sure Dave can attest. Actually, Dave's never had two. No, we had just one and three. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. one, <laughs> catapulted to three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No segue like, for Dave. Dave just <laughs> hit the ground running. One to three immediately. That's, my sister did that. She's got four now, but like she went one, three, and then four. And I'm just like, wow, you're just, she's a machine. My but, wife um, wants four. And I'm like, <laughs> how, how old are the twins? They're they're two, oh two okay, yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just wait on that a little bit. <laughs> let's just wait a little bit. <laughs> oh man! All right, funny. so um, let's just do some open discussion. I was reading I was reading uh, a little bit on uh, entrepreneur.com about. Uh, it's funny that you said uh, your business is your baby, Mo, because um, I think as entrepreneurs, it's it's really kind of that's the way we think about it, right? Our businesses are our babies. And, and then when we have babies, um, that kind of presents its own challenges. But um, do you guys think it's been healthy so far for your kids that you're entrepreneurs? I think overall it has been uh, just because of the flexibility um, if I was, and, and there are like salary jobs where they're more flexible and kind of um, very conscious of the work life balance thing. Um, but running your own business, I think, I, it, I don't know, I, I kind of oscillate back and forth, but um, generally I feel like I have more freedom in terms of when I do work and when, like, if, you know, my wife needs me. My wife is not working anymore, she's, she's a full time mom. Uh, at least until the kids are all in, in grade school. Um, but I think as an entrepreneur, just because it's your own business, there is that flexibility. Like if I need to drop my, my son off at preschool and my wife needs to be with you know the twins, then I can do that. Um, I can step away from work and, and do that and come back and you know, come back to work. I wouldn't be able to do that you know, if I was working a nine to five. So... Just for that, I think, um, I, I would say that's one of the main things, just the flexibility in time. 
I agree with Dave. I think flexibility is definitely something. Now my, my son is not at a stage where he's like, oh, dad is an entrepreneur. <laughs> and this is amazing. My son is at the stage where looking at the ceiling is kind of like enough. And now he's sitting up. So, but Ooh. I think, I think as he gets older, even just me looking at other entrepreneurs, the, the tenacity that comes across from entrepreneurs and the different kind of mindset, even the language we use is different, right? So I think it's going to be healthy for my child to see that because I'm big on autonomy and for him to, to be able to see that this is by choice, this, this level of tenacity and grit and, you know, dark days and <laughs> overcoming. And, uh, I think that's going to ingrain uh, a different kind of citizen. Uh, and it, it teaches, it teaches him through like observational learning that putting, putting effort into something that you want can yield results and you are in control of that. And the more you do or the smarter you work or the more you learn, that's how the results change versus being at the mercy of someone else's control. When we say nine to five, uh, and that's what I'm really excited about. Now, I think there are, cons mm -hmm. to being an entrepreneur yeah. and a dad uh if you don't have a good harmony between family life and work life like some people call it work-life balance some people call it integration i'm i'm of the camp now i don't like to call it balance because balance means that something will go up another thing will go down you know so i'm trying to see how the two worlds can dance like what kind of harmony can they can they have um, and we can get into that in different episodes, but for, for me, I think it can be unhealthy when the harmony is not there and it's skewed. And then they see that dad isn't around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dad's priorities or, are elsewhere. Yeah. Or even when you're off and I think I'm, I'm, I've gotten a lot better with this and this is why, um, my wife and I have, we've talked through like drawing very clear boundaries of when work mm. is on and work is off. So, on the weekends, I don't work. Like Saturday, Sunday, I'm out. Uh, Friday at six, I close down the computer. I don't turn it on until Sunday night. Wow, uh, at six. So uh, the weekend is family time. Um, and like, because before I was in a place when we had our son, uh, I was like, I'd be working, and then I would come. You know, I would five or six rolls around and now it's, you know, prep for dinner and spend time with the family. I'd be thinking about stuff that happened during the day and I'm not completely present there for my son. And this is one of the reasons that my wife and I decided to take time off from work completely because mm -hmm. then it's completely off our radar. So we can be there for the girls and, and for our son who at that point was more aware of the world around him and, um, like at two, you start processing stuff. And that's when actually his language really picked up. He started to speak more. Um, mm. He started to put like ideas together, words together, concepts together. So uh, the timing, oh. I think it was, it was right for us. How old was he when, when that happened? He was two. So okay. They're, yeah, they're two right years on. apart. Um, but there were times where like I'd catch myself or my wife actually would catch me uh, thinking about or like looking at my phone. <laughs> you know, looking yeah. at social media or other things. It's not like for personal stuff, but for, for work, work-related mm -hmm. stuff, like an email, yeah. waiting for an email to come in or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, client response. Uh, or a client response would come in and I feel like obligated to, you know, return the email or, or the message or whatever. And it's not important, but like, but I felt compelled to do that. And I just, I had to draw the line, like I'm off now. Like clients can't yeah. reach me after, you know, in the evenings or whatever. So that's, that's been kind of a, a wake up call, especially after having kids. It's like, okay, my, my kid, whether he's completely aware, to, aware of it or not, like subconscious, at a subconscious level, it feels like dad's physically present, but he's not <laughs> all there with me. Yeah. And I, I didn't, I don't want to do that that's, to, to my kids. That is my just present struggle right now. Just, um, Same. I think just because I'm, I think we're, Right now, I've had this kind of resurgence of creativity, leaving that day job kind of like freed up all this mental capacity to create, which is great. And I haven't had that in a long time. So I kind of dove head head first right into just creation mode and just pumping out content. And 
Um, and so as I'm doing that, even though I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, even though I'm taking care of my kids full time, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, um, you know, all morning till their nap time pretty much. And then I kind of get a, a little break to, to do whatever, you know, jump on, do some work, whatever. Um, it's, it's a struggle to not to take my mind out of constantly creating and doing and moving and, and, you know, this work that is all encompassing really. <clears throat> um, it's, it takes really a concerted effort to kind of remove yourself from that to focus and, um, you know, I love that you, you said that there is no balance, right, Mo? Because there is no balance. And it's, it's more about, I love that you're talking about harmony, um, how everything does and will work together, whether, whether you're all in work mode and you know that there's harmony happening with your work because you're present there, right? I, I think it was Errol Gerson, Gerson that said, you know, there is no balance. It's about, it's about being present where you are mm. and why you're there, right? So when we're working, we have to be all in 100% working and not feel any obligation to be thinking about our kids or be thinking about our, our home life at that moment because we're doing that for our family, right? And then mm. when we're with our family, we have to have the same freedom. And that's, that's, that's where I'm struggling right now, just to kind of disconnect. Um, we have to have that same freedom to be fully present with them and not present anywhere else yeah. with work or things like that, which, which as entrepreneurs, it's, 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 it's hard. I know it's really hard for me to, to yeah. unplug. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm guilty of it right now. Mm. Like these past two weeks have been immensely difficult. Um, I can't turn it off. Yeah. And what I realize happens is when I'm 120% invested in work, work just like whether it be exposure sales you know business thriving communication operationally all of these things and then you can see the family suffer you know and and that harmony hasn't happened just yet when it was just me and my wife like it's much easier to come back and still be working around each other and that be time together and maybe cut it off right before bed but with the baby there there requires he requires of you a different level of attention Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I, I don't want to use the word struggling, but it's still kind of the, if I'm dancing, cause I like to think of it as a dance, I'm stepping on feet <laughs> hard. Yeah. Like people, the person I'm dancing with, which is the family is like their, their feet are bruised. Because of <laughs> and the crazy part is you guys know, I'm a big fan of the book, eat that frog. There's a section that Brian Tracy talks about getting into the flow state and whatnot, but there's a quote and he says, the quality of time at work is what matters and the quantity of time at home is what matters or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you're doing work, you should be, there should be a level of quality in the, in, in, in the effort in which you're putting for work. So the flow state, right? And for those that don't know the flow state, it's like an, an in-depth state of complete immersion in the work that you're doing. But then what's remembered with the family is how much time did you spend with the family? How much time were you there with the family? So if you spend more time with the family, even if some of that time isn't fully present, because I, I don't see myself ever being like fully present, you know? Um, <clears throat> but I think the net at the end of the day will be, will be more positive uh, if you're able to spend more quantity of time. Uh, and the book also goes into like, leave the, when you're working, you're working, when you're yeah. with family, you're with family. So there is an element of presence, but it's also like, you can have a bunch of time at work at the office and not get any quality of work done. Mm -hmm. So it's like, but with the family, you can have a lot of time with the family and they'll remember that you were there during these moments. So it's a struggle, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right now, at least in the early stages, we'll, we'll see mm -hmm. how it, uh, we'll see if I can get to Dave's status. <laughs> no, man. Oh, man. I, I'm actually having the opposite problem coming back from taking a break, um, mm. focusing like intensely on the work. Because um, mm. I, I, I work at I work from home. I have a home office above the garage, which is somewhat separate from the house. There's a hallway that connects us, but it's it's like it's essentially separate. Um, 
but every once in a while, like if the kids get crazy, I can hear sort of faintly, you know, voices, little voices. And so part of me is like, okay, should I be going down to help out with this? Or like, mm. do I, like, you know, I mean, when I'm really immersed in the work, if I'm doing like, especially if I'm doing client projects, and this is different for me, like if I'm working on a client project, then like I'm focused. If I'm doing like working on the business part, because it's not as urgent, there's not as many tangible, like, I don't know, deadlines or whatever, other than the ones that you set for yourself. It's a little bit more flexible. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, oh, yeah, I could, I should probably go down. Like, I'm not really doing anything <laughs> urgent right now. Like, the, the, the prospects that I'm trying to reach out to, they won't know that I'm reaching out to them or whatever. Yeah, I can come back to it. So, for me, when I'm working on the business, like, it's easy for me to get distracted and want to feel like oh maybe i should spend some time with the family I, but I when i'm on client projects i'm just like on client projects. i feel that one one thousand percent just like if i if i hear those voices if i hear like you know they're having fun and, and my wife's in there and they're just like talking and stuff like that but then that volume just slowly goes and then it's like <laughs> my my son when my son walks um he and my uh niece are like a month apart so mm -hmm. she's like, when he walks, he looks like he's like, he's like walking somewhere with purpose. Right. <laughs> and he's, 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 you know, 14 months already. And you, you just hear it's like, bom, 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 bom. like, he's like stepping down. He's like, I'm here. Let's do this. You know? Mm -hmm. And so he's just like this little like bull and just kind of like, just, just he, whenever he's in a place, you can hear, you know, where he is. Cause he's, he's loud, you know? Wow. So swallow it around <laughs> just like crushing it crushing that floor right <laughs> just like putting that foot down it's like i'm here so when and my <clears throat> i wish my office was separated by by a by a hall it's like literally just another bedroom in 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 the house that we're in and it's like when it gets loud outside it's it's loud and and so like i'm just kind of like constantly like should i should i go down there should i should i do i need to step in right now even though my wife, you know, we, we have this, we have this um, uh, understanding that, you know, when she comes home, I can work, you know, mm -hmm. so she comes home, she takes over with the kids and I'm like in the office, I'm like, all right, what do I got to catch up on? What do I got to do? Where's my list of, you know, how many frogs I got to eat right now in this like two hour period, like what mm -hmm. I got, you know? So um, it's, it's like that constant, like, it's not, it's not a distraction in the sense that, you know, I, I can't work, but it's a distraction in the sense that do do i need to step in there do i need to do i need to be dad right now or can i just continue to be yeah. you know at my business right now i i can't even be in the same vicinity <laughs> that's what i'm learning like i can't be, like i have yeah. to be completely away from the family yeah. or else and as a new dad i just go into full guilt mode <laughs> yeah i'm like i'm not present i'm not here um and then and i said this to dave early on when when, I, when my son was like two months, I was like, bro, help, I don't, know. I don't know what to do. And I just started realizing, and Dave said this earlier, and I really want to get into this, is is there like an absolute line in the sand that you have to create? Like for you, you took time off of work completely. And for me right now, I have to be, if the family's at home, I cannot work at home. Yeah. I can't even work in a separate room because my, that muscle isn't trained yet to be able to isolate the family mm -hmm. while I'm still in the same vicinity. It's almost like there's a, an energy circle and <laughs> there's different rooms in that circle. But if yeah. you're in the sphere, <laughs> right. like you're, gonna, you're just going to gravitate towards it. And yeah. um, so I, I can't even get into a flow state if I'm in the vicinity. It's like, it's like you can't work in bed, right? Because mm -hmm. you, you get tired or you're told not to like, differentiate where you right. do things so your yeah. environment can also change you physiologically yeah that's how i feel when it comes to, so i i use that as a segue to do you think because you have people like chris doe who say my life my work life is integration i know certain families are different right certain people have wives that are doing mm -hmm. the majority of the the caregiving and the eq stuff and sometimes it's flipped right there's the wife that's at work and the husband that's doing eq and family stuff is integration and harmony even possible or do we have to draw these absolute line in the sands where it's family's over here, work is over here. And when I step over the line, I'm dad. When I step over the line, I'm entrepreneur. 
What do you guys think? I think it's like when uh, Chris talks about um, Christo, when he talks about uh, different types of or different parts of your personality. So when you're doing a YouTube channel or, you know, you're on on camera, your persona or a part of your personality, a different part of your personality comes out versus when you're just hanging out with your friends or your family or whatever. Right. Uh, it's just, a, it's not that you're being fake. It's just you're a different part of your yourself is being emphasized or highlighted. So uh, I think when you're working, obviously your, your entrepreneur like side of you is coming out and that's what's dominant. But I don't think you can ever st- completely step away from dad. And even in, yeah. in like when I'm working with uh, freelancers, they're kind of like, in, in some ways, they're kind of like my kids. Like I, I treat them as, <laughs> in some ways, like a, as my kids that, that I've brought on to help me do this project. And I set some parameters for them to follow. And uh, I help them, I try to encourage them to get to, you know, the goal so the dad part that comes out of like you know raising my kids i think also bleeds into my work stuff too Mm. um in in that sense so i think i mean as as a person we're multifaceted and complex and not robotic and binary so uh i think there's different parts of you know our lives that we bring into different other parts of our, our lives and it's not I don't think it's black and white, but I, I do think there, for me anyways, I need to draw like very definite boundaries. Like if I didn't have the weekend, if my wife and I didn't have the weekend rule where the computer get, turn, gets turned off, I don't go into the office um, unless it's like an absolute, absolute emergency. Mm-hmm. And by mm-hmm. that, I mean like someone's going to die or well, like, <laughs> lose, lose hundreds of thousands of dollars. Wow. That's the yeah. line for for working on the weekend Hun. client is dying Hun, my <laughs> client is gonna die he needs this video <laughs> now yeah the company oh. is crumbling without my motion graphics <laughs> exactly being delivered on a saturday evening yeah that's wild so, yeah i mean it has to be pretty dire situation for me to, to do anything on the weekend because if that if i don't draw that line that i i just it, it creeps in very easily like to do a little extra this, to do a little extra, you know, to do another social post or, or, you know, whatever. It's like, it's endless, the things that you can do for your business. So I think at some point you have to draw some clear boundaries and clear lines um, for me anyways, to, to preserve, you know, growing and nurturing the family um, and keeping those relationships, not just maintaining them, but like, because, you know, after having kids and being close to 50 now and entering sort of the second half of my life, I've been reevaluating, like, I look at life very differently than when I was, you know, 20 or 30, uh, where things like my business isn't the most important thing in my life. And mm. especially having kids, it's like, there's a human being, now there's three that are like literally dependent on, on me. So that takes precedent for me. Uh, over anything else it doesn't mean I don't care about my business I'm passionate about my business I'm passionate about you know my work but mm-hmm. push comes to shove it's you know I have to put in some parameters there for for me to to be able to you know thrive uh, in the family life I think that was a big um, impetus for us making the decision that we did when I had to step away from work um, we lost some child care. My mom wasn't doing so good, so she couldn't take care of our kids anymore. So um, we had to evaluate whether um, who would step away. Uh, we both made relatively similar amounts of money. I think she made a couple grand more a year than I did. Um, my wife, <clears throat> she works for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and um, she loves her job. She loves their mission. She's all about it. Um, they rely on her greatly. Um, I was in a place where I wasn't really super excited about what I was doing for the day job and we had to evaluate. So, so do I spend more time away working less time with my kids just so that we can keep them in daycare so we can spend less time with them or do, does one of us step away from that, that constant stream of income to 
be present with our kids so that they can actually kind of exhibit some of the growth that your son did, you know, um, Dave, when you took that time off, just so they can blossom under, under your kind of presence and being there. And um, back to kind of that quality over quantity um, idea as far as like being present with our kids or, 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 you know, having short bursts of quality time. Um, I have a friend in, in LA, he's a director and he's like, um, he's like, it's not about quality time. It's about all the time. You know, it's about, it's about the, the quantity of time. You've got to have good time. You're going to have crap time. You're going to have junk time, but you're going to have time. Right. And that's what they're going to remember. They're going to remember the experiences and they're going to, I think, I think they're going to grow with us more seeing us handle situations Mm -hmm. daily and, and hour by hour and minute by minute that we're going to face because we're entrepreneurs, right? That, that we're not going to be able to give them the privilege of, of going through with us if, um, if we didn't have that, that opportunity more so, right? So um, if, we can, if we can somehow develop that harmony where we're, where we're you know, I love, I love that, you're, that you're sticking to the stick, strict schedule, Dave, that, that, you know, Friday night, you're done and you're off and everything that everything's about the family Saturday and Sunday, you know, and then Monday, Monday, you're back at it, but then that gives you an opportunity to, to focus um, on what you need to do. Right. Um, and so I, I, that's where I need, that's where I need help right now. Uh, as far as like, I need to, I need to make a schedule and I need to be, I need to be committed to that schedule. Cause right now I'm not, I'm committed to, to, everything when which you know we all know that that means i'm committed to nothing absolutely right now so like i'm not i'm not making the ends that i need to make with my business i'm not making the ends that i need to make with my family i don't want it to be i don't want to maintain my family i want to grow my family i want to you know be part of their growth and their their development you know i don't want to just be around and oh dad's working and he's busy over there but he's not here with us you know Mm. I want to be, I want to be present mentally and, and emotionally mm-hmm. for my kids, even though I'm running a business or trying to, you know, it's hard to run a business without any clients, but um, that's a whole different story. That's a, that's a different day. That's a, that's, a, that's an entrepreneur heavy, heavy talk in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. podcast. <laughs> no, but you, we're saying some, some powerful stuff and Dave and you Mario mentioned about, I think Dave said like you're multifaceted and I totally get that. From a personality spoken like a true seven are you a seven dave or a five what are you about seven five what am i uh i'm a six actually a six spoken like a true six right i I keep forget every time i take that i'm a different different number (laughs) man i'm a two i'm an eight i'm a two i'm an eight i i can respect being multifaceted personality wise and i understand that different parts of your personality come up depending on the role that you're playing right if you're a brother there's a different element. If you're uh, a son, there's a different element, husband, dad, all of these kind of things. My thing that I keep hearing from all of us is that the line in the sand is drawn when it comes to behaviors and actions, right? Like you're still dad and entrepreneur Saturday through Sunday, Mm -hmm. but your behaviors Saturday and Sunday are dad behaviors. Mm -hmm. They're daddy actions. And then Monday through Friday, it's like, the, if there was a if there was a a barometer, you're like more on the entrepreneur side, right? Like the spidey senses for dad are still tingling, but the actions are more entrepreneurial. So that I don't want to say that kind of scares me, but it makes me wonder: is that the healthy approach to a harmonious work life balance at the stage where we're at? Because a lot of our kids are still young. Like I firmly believe that when I'm older and my kid is six or seven. I'm just going to bring them to conferences. I'm just going to bring them to the office. Like Mario said, I'm just going to watch like the time. I'm going to let them watch me work while they do their thing as well. Mm. You know, just to, cause I don't know who remembers like being with their parents as they're working. Of course, not all the mm. time, but for a good bit of time. Right. Like, let me see dad in action in his element. Right. But like, it just sounds like there has to be this delineation between daddy behaviors and entrepreneur behaviors. 
And maybe it's just a learning curve that, as Dave would say, uh, different for everybody, you know? Well, uh, yeah, I think it really is different for everybody. Um, and, and ultimately it comes down to choices that you make as, as a human being, as a father, as an entrepreneur. Um, and, and like even the way that we raise our kids, like the three of us probably raise our kids differently in different ways. Maybe there's mm-hmm. a lot of similarities, but there's probably a lot of differences as well. And those are based on the way that we're informed and kind of what our values are or what we mm-hmm. uh, feel like are the most productive or most effective or, you know, based around our values. Um, but I think ultimately, like, it, 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 for me, it comes down to time and presence. So how we, how we, um, how we divvy up our time or what we spend our time on and then, and then are we present when we're, spending our time on those things just like you said mo earlier about when you're working like you're 120 percent in on the mm-hmm. work that's for me i'm finding that hard to to be 120 percent in when mm-hmm. i'm like in the back of my mind like i'd rather be hanging out with my family mm-hmm. it might be an age like it might be a different like um place in life or, or Maybe. Age kind of thing because uh, i could see when i was if i was if i had kids when i was 20 or 30 uh, I, I might have a different perspective. Like I might be like, you know what? I need to grow my business and this is what really matters to me so that my family doesn't have to worry about, you know, whatever. And they have everything that they have, you know, going forward and all that stuff. And that's not as much, it, it mm. is still a concern, but it's not as, as pressing. Um, and maybe it's partly like we, we do have some money saved up and, and I've been doing this for a while where, you know, my business has a, a decent runway and, so it's not as urgent. And for me right now, where I am in, in my life, like um, investing into my kids, because this is another thing I, I like, and th- th- this kind of bleeds into the presence thing. And you guys can stop me if I'm talking too much. I feel like I'm talking too much. But like the presence thing, you know, even at age like six months or, or a year or two years when they're not able to cognitively like remember there, I think it's like kids at the, like the earliest they could maybe remember is like at two, maybe mm. um, usually around three or four. Right. So, but that's on a con- like cognitive level, like factual, I remember these memories, mm-hmm. but on an emotive level, on an emotional level, there's like stuff that's banked up that they can't mm. necessarily like they don't know what it is, but it's on a subconscious, like underneath the underneath. And that's where I think the presence part is so important. Like, and that's why my wife and I decided with the twins, we wanted to make sure that they felt like this is a safe place. This is a safe world. Like I can relax. I don't have to be Mm. on defense all the time. And I, and for us, that was like, we wanted that to be a core part of their personalities where there's the, the, that they feel secure, that they have kind of th- this, you know, uh, these caregivers that are there and, and present for them and they're, they're going to, you know, you don't have to worry. Um, so on an emotive level, we wanted to invest in them like at that early sort of formative age. Is my son going to really remember even on an emotional level and like, from a scholarship standpoint, I, I know the answer, but I'm not going to say the answer out loud. But like, <laughs> is it really going to matter now versus when like I've built this empire and he's just a part of it? Like he's a part of the journey. And because you hear people like Joe Coy, the comedian, Gary Vaynerchuk and Bill, uh, who Sebastian Meniscalco, he's like, yeah, my, me and my dad got formally introduced at 18. <laughs> like, <laughs> and they're like, and they're all like very successful. Now, granted, the majority of them are very, very weird personalities. Like if you watch Joe Coy and Sebastian Maniscalco and Gary V, you're like, these are some weird cats. You know, they're <laughs> wired differently. Uh, I just struggle where, it, and it's probably because I'm a younger parent. So I'm, I'm not going to say my age. Ruin my credibility. I'm not going to say my age. <laughs> Uh, we know how old you are. I am a younger parent, so my objective right now is like <laughs> there's a cor- there's a correlation between the livelihood and comfort of my family and the success of my business, and that to me is like a not a scary thought, but it's like the business plummets. Who's gonna buy these diapers? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, who's gonna? And, 
And let me let me preface or let me <laughs> add a disclaimer to everything that I said up to this point is you, I think people do what they they need to do and what they feel like is right for them. And I'm not here to criticize. I, I'm not going to oh, yeah. look down at any parent who does stuff differently. For my wife and I, like having grown up the way that we grew up in the history that we have and kind of where what we know and what we know might obviously is not everything like we we don't know everything about everything we from but from the information that we have this is what these are the choices that we've made out of that and and from the place that we are in our in our lives um so like i know the human like the human spirit is very very resilient and you know, you put stuff against people and you, you, you push and, and give them resistance and it brings out another layer of like, you know, um, another, you realize you have a greater capacity, capacity of whatever to, mm. you know, go through life. Like even as parents, like I remember the first six months, I was like, I cannot do this. <laughs> like, this is not right. Like, how do parents, how's anyone done this before? Like, you know, operate on three hours of sleep a night. <laughs> and, but somehow, like, being put in that position, you, it, you bring it out. Like, it, it gets brought out of you, right? So yeah. I think there's an argument for that side too. Like, you, you put your kids through hardship and, and let them, let them build up that, that grit and that, um, and, and there's like strong documentation for that. Like, you know, so uh, ultimately I think, I think it comes down to like choices that you make for, for yourself and your family. I think the, the most f- afraid I've ever been in my life was <laughs> the, this is like the, 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 the height of my fear. I've always wanted kids, right? <clears throat> but the most afraid I've ever been was like the 10 minutes before my, my, my wife gave actual birth to my daughter. I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> it's not going to happen. And then, and then right away, like when they, when they put that baby in your arms for the first mm-hmm. time, and you're actually like, okay, this one's yours. And they, they placed her in my arms. I was like, nope, this is right. This is, I, I know exactly what to do now. Yeah. And it was weird. It was just like a switch. And I think... I think that's what happens with when we get put into these situations, right? We, yeah, we get backed up into a corner, but we're like, okay, I'm, I know what to do. And we're going to, I think the mindset of an entrepreneur is, is that we're problem solvers, right? We have to, we have to, we have to figure out what to do next. And the addition of these little lives in our, in, in, in our world, right? It just, it throws everything everything out the window like everything that you thought everything that you thought was going to happen is is now completely different even though you may have you may have had the best forethought you may have read all the books and you may have you may have you know have the best coach but when it's yours and it's your thing and it's your kid it's totally different i prepared (laughs) because i was like if i read books and i set expectations for myself on how they're going to be done I'm going to feel 10 X more guilty and disappointed that I'm not meeting some sort of universal parenting standard. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can emulate 1% of what my parents did for me, I'll be fine. And I know I, not everyone can say that, Mm -hmm. but I, I, I think there, so we don't fall like for this podcast. So we don't fall victim to like, well, you know, you just kind of, yeah, just do it. Everyone's unique. You know, I do feel (laughs) like there are a little bit of universal things that have to be done for you to feel fulfilled in your parenting while being an entrepreneur and a lot of nuggets i've personally gleaned even from this conversation and from other conversations with you guys but one for me that sticks out the most is like i didn't prepare i didn't prepare because i do believe in that we're biologically predisposed to be at the ready you know, and you just have to make the choice to let that disposition consume you. Some people don't. Some people are like, whoa, I'm out. And you've heard <laughs> stories about parents that, yeah. you know, some, and it's unfortunate, like some mothers will go through uh, pre or uh, post, postpartum, postpartum, depression. postpartum depression. And you've heard extreme stories where the mother completely ditches a family because of how hard postpartum is or, or, you know, early fifties where fathers would just neglect and, and consume themselves at work. So there's, there are extremes, but I really think that's because there's these arbitrary ideals 
or rules from all these parenting books and all these gurus that are out there. And it's like the only universal rule in relation to that for me is it's almost like a freaking sprint. Like to use design language, there's a parenting sprint. It's like, Oh, okay. He fell off the bed. What, how do you problem solve that? You know, <laughs> like, what do you do in this? <laughs> what do you do in that regard? Or like, um, there's a, you know, I don't know, just multiple different things. Like Mario said that you have to problem solve in the moment that books will give you an idea, but you know, you have to hold yourself to a standard that's custom. I think. Uh, absolutely. I think like I was given like, I think at least three books like, and I, I looked at them and I was like, oh, these would probably be really helpful. And I didn't pick them up once because I was like, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, you know, and, and I'm going to, I'm, if I'm not prepared to do it now, like it's too late. Like I'm going to, I'm going to read it back, books. put it back. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> can, you know, I'm out. Let's, <laughs> can we just kind of, is there a return to sender somewhere? Like where's the stamp? Like, <laughs> you know, like. And then, you know, it's like, it's like, I can, I can prepare, but if I, if I prepare, like I'm going to get confused because what I innately know to do will be confused with everything else that everybody's trying to influence me with, you know, oh, this is how you do this. And this is how you do that. And which is fine, you know, but I want to make sure that, that I know that, um, I know that, that innately who I am is going to take care of my, my children to the best of my ability. And I'm going to, I'm going to go to war for them. I'm going to, you know, do whatever I need to do to make sure that they're safe, happy and whole little people. Um, and I will read and I will, you know, I will study, you know, things as, as things come up that I yeah, am not sure what to deal with because I, you know, much like you guys, absolutely. You know, I, I, I want to be that lifelong learner and, and parenting is not, it's not something I want to like do blindly, mm -hmm. but I also want to make sure that um, I'm also operating with some level of uh, intuition and, and the way that, the way that I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm presenting, I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing it the way that um, I know innately it should be done in some way. I think I think we all talked uh, perfectly enough. <laughs> Every there's a there's a solid like rhythm there. <laughs> all right, assuming. all right. So we are we are kind of closing on the end of this call. Thank you guys. Um, I want to do let's do like a rapid fire. Uh, one one major takeaway, and we cannot use David Co is awesome. Other than that, any, anything else is darn it. <laughs> I, I wrote down Mario are awesome. <laughs> I wrote down cool, calm, and collected. That's Dave. Oh, <laughs> oh there you go. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's a prime dad joke right there. That's prime that's dad quality, joke. It's quality I've, dad joke. I realized that the more I tell jokes, the more I sound like my father, which makes me sad. <laughs> makes me sad. But anyway, one one key takeaway, Mo. Um, takeaway. I think for me. I'm excited to dive deeper into what are some objectives that you have as a parent for your children and how does that end up changing the trajectory of your parenting style? David mentioned it very briefly. He said, me and my wife wanted them to have emotional stability and that has guided a lot of our choices. So the takeaway for me is you should have some sort of North star that at least guides you through the blind spots and makes you more objective and aware when you reflect on how you're parenting so you can seek further knowledge or um, just continue on what's working. So that, that's what I'd like to dive deeper into and that's my takeaway. Yeah. Dave? Um, for me, I think just having this conversation, both Mario and, and Mo, just a reminder of like how resilient our kids are and how like, <laughs> Their minds are very like plastic, right? It's they can bounce back from stuff, and and we don't have to over, um, I don't know, over protect or over, you know, curate or direct or whatever. Um, so that was that's a good reminder. I, I know, I remember reading. Uh, see, I'm the on the other side where I read too much of this stuff. 
my wife is like even more than me. So um, she'll oh, like my wife is articles. <laughs> she'll send me articles or like, have you read this book? Have you read this book? Have you read this article? <laughs> nope. um, so I'll read some of it. But uh, yeah, I remember reading one about how the neuroplasticity of kids and the resilience of kids. Uh, it's so like, it's beyond what, what we would imagine. But uh, that's a good reminder for that. Had a whole bachelor's, so whole bachelor's degree with child development semester in class. So uh, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want somebody to tell me what to do in a book anymore. Anyways, <laughs> uh, takeaway. I think um, takeaway for me is uh, the was really kind of about the harmony aspect of what we're doing and and how I think the 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 whole of what we do <clears throat> is is completely integrated into the whole of who we are, right? Um, so like we're an entrepreneur and we're entrepreneurs and we're, we're, we're fathers and we're husbands and we're brothers and we're, you know, we're, we're, we're sons. Um, and, and that is, it's not, it's not, it's almost not compartmentalizable. If that's, that's not a word I know, but it's not, it's not, we cannot compartmentalize all of that. We have to, we have to know that we are all of that all the time, you know, mm-hmm. and, and that's going to be, and that's going to be okay. And it's going to be good. And it's an asset to, to be, um, I think to be an, a business owner and a dad and, and a parent and, and our kids are going to be better for depending on how we deal with our business, right. And how our business either runs us or, or is is run by us you know our, our kids are going to grow greatly through our experience in running our business um, because they're going to see us in situations that otherwise they wouldn't be able to do that so that's my key takeaway harmony baby harmony, harmony. as this was awesome this is a fun um let's do it again sometime yeah <laughs> let's do it we'll see you next week at the same exact time oh man <laughs> Uh, tune, we'll into see. The, uh, tune into the what, how how can we name this? I don't know. Uh, do? Ma, Ma, uh, hold on, hold on. It's gonna come to me. <laughs> Motomar. Comario. 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 Morio. Co. Morio Co. Morio Co. I don't know. I will work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> guys, you guys are awesome. Uh, we'll talk soon. Mo's. No, no, I don't know where. It's, it's awful. <laughs> it's horrible. No, we're going to keep it just like that. Wow, that was really bad. Okay. <laughs>